chapter 18, page 195. Woosah! An enormous scream and a startling figure clad in a silk kimono, black trousers fastened tightly at the ankles and grimy plimp soles leapt from the allotment shed, clearing the five-foot bean poles in a single bound to descend with a sickening crash amongst a pile of upturned bell cloches. Damn it! The figure stepped from the wreckage, straightened its wig, then... Banzai! The figure strutted forward, performed an amazing carter, and drove the fingers of his right hand through the corrugated wall of the shed. The figure was Archroy, and he was well on his way to mastering the secrets of the legendary Count Dante. The area around his shed was a mass of tangled wreckage. The wheelbarrow was in splinters. The watering can was an unrecognisable tangle of zinc. Archroy strode forward upon elastic limbs and sought things to destroy. The Dimac manual lay open. It was marked at a page labelled The Art of the Iron Hand. Aroo! Archroy leapt into the air and kicked the weather vane from the top of O'Malley's shed, returning to the ground upon bouncing feet. He laughed loudly. The sound echoed over the empty dust bowl, bouncing from the mission wall and disappearing over his head in the direction of the river. Iron Hand, he said. I'll show them. He had read the Dimac manual from cover to cover and learned it by heart. The deadliest form of martial arts known to mankind, it said, whose brutal, maiming, tearing, rending and disfigurating techniques have for many years been known only to the high lamas of Tibet, where in the snowy wastes of the Himalayas they have been perfecting the art of Dimac. Count Dante had scorned his sacred vow of silence, taken in the lofty halls of the Patala, never to reveal the secret science. He had brought his knowledge and skill back to the West, where, for a mere $1.98, these maiming, disfiguring and crippling techniques could be made available to the simple layman. Archroy felt an undying gratitude for the masked Count, the deadliest man on earth, who must surely be living a life of fear, lest the secret emissaries from Lhasa catch up with him. Oh yeah. <laughs>